what I'm trying to do on the channel is kind of do a once a month, bi-monthly, I don't know. Just every once in a while, just do a check-in on the channel. Um, you know, uh, I saw Lock Wolf's um, Renception today, and I, I found that I resonated a lot with what he said. Um, but in case you guys haven't noticed, I haven't posted a lot of videos the last couple weeks. I think I've maybe done one a week. Um, you know, it, it's burnout is a real thing for content creators. For me, it's a little bit different, I feel. Um, <sighs> content creation for me, it's essentially I'm fitting in that time when I can. And a lot of times that means letting it cut into other stuff so like family time i'm cutting into my family time to go in and record and edit and all that stuff cutting in sometimes to my work my nine to five job and sometimes i'm cutting into other things that i want to do like like making music um but you know uh when things get stressful when things get kind of to the point where i need a break or i need some type of coping mechanism I guess for lack of a better term the channel has always been that kind of coping mechanism or that go-to to kind of get me out of you know the, the monotony of everyday life um, we go into these things or uh, you know some people go into these things and they have kind of a vision of what's going to happen right with success without success whatever you know, I go into things like, these are my hopes and dreams. Here's kind of the middle ground where, like, I might not see the success I want, but at least there's something going on. And then, the, the, you know, the lowest on that is, like, it fails and I completely stop, right? So I set my expectations kind of in all three of those realms for everything that I do because re reality is you're not going to succeed at everything. You're not going to fail at everything. But if you're prepared for everything, the, hit, the blow for whatever it is, is is less, right? You know, so I came into this content creation thing with high hopes right the, the the whole point is to eventually if i can quit my nine to five job that i have which i love by the way um it is grueling it is very tedious but i i don't i don't hate it um but to be able to do this that i love to do and be able to have that be a way to provide would be awesome that's the dream right but I'm not holding out hope for that. I'm doing this as a hobby right now. If it succeeds, that's great. If it doesn't succeed, then you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, so, uh, but like I said, I set my expectations in a certain way and you, you have, it's a guessing game. Like I can't go into this and be like, I know exactly what it's gonna feel like if I'm succeeding. I know exactly what it's gonna feel like, you know, at any spectrum of, 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 it, of any of it. And um, you know, I got to a point where I started doing Dimash reactions and Morissette reactions and watching you and all this stuff that I've never really like heard of before, which is awesome. I love learning about new artists. And you guys know that from, from past experiences with, my, with this channel that I love doing that. Um, but it gets to a point like, where, I, where I'm also trying to like not just do reactions. I want this channel to evolve. I want this channel to change with my success right the more people that subscribe to my channel and like me not just the, the artists that i'm covering but me right more people will kind of watch other stuff that i do and that's why i want to evolve right I, and we all know what's going on with reactors and stuff right now but so i want the channel to be able to evolve but the more artists that come about that people enjoy right the harder it is for me to stay away from reactions without fighting like those fan bases if that makes sense so like right i want to keep doing ren right and i did a whole stream a three hour stream of one ren album right um there's not many songs left for me to do for ren so like that one's not too much of a big deal but you know we have we have ginger that i haven't got to in a while there's a bunch of songs i need to get to from them falling in reverse i still need to get to i have uh now more set that i just started dimash has, still has a, a, a bunch left watching you now has a bunch um, the warning i want to get to like there's all these uh, these groups that i have a bunch to get to and then i have over a hundred requests in my discord just from you know re regular requests that i'm probably not going to be able to get to and i mentioned in my discord like 
I'm setting a limit of every six hours being able to send requests to those channels because I can't keep up. And uh, and then the members, they can do it every three hours. But those ones I have to get to because they're member requests. They're pay, you know, people paying for me to react to stuff. So and and all that. And then Patreon's also ramping up now where I'm getting requests through there. Uh, so some of the dynamics of the channel is going to change. A lot of the Patreon requests are going to stay on Patreon. If they do well on Patreon, I'll move them over to YouTube. But that's not what this whole thing's about. Um, you know, I, I, I got so burnt out and the mental kind of turmoil of doing this stuff is like, now that this, the channel is seeing success, which is what I wanted, right? Um, I'm unable to, uh, to accommodate my timing on it, to be able to release stuff at the rate I want to release it. Therefore, these I can't handle the amount of, and that's not like I'm having major success, but like the amount of the growth that's happening now, obviously with more, you know, people who like my channel, there's more demand for stuff. And it's just hard for me to keep up between my my life and, and work and all that. So like, I just hit a point where I get, I got so bird out that like before when I would get bird out, it would just be from recording and re reacting and, 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 and filming and editing to where like, I would still be on my phone, like l going through everybody's comments and, and reacting, at least reacting, but trying to respond to every single comment. I still try to do that it's getting harder and harder. But, um, you know, these last two or three videos that I posted, I just, I don't even, I don't want to say I don't care, but like, I haven't it almost gives me anxiety now going into the app and being like, I have all of these, I have like 60 comments right now. I have to go through and, and react to the longer I wait, the longer that list is going to get. But like, I don't have the mental capacity right now to just do it. Um, so instead of escaping now to YouTube, right. From regular life, like my obsession now is, is sports. So like, I'm totally obsessed with this game on Sunday for the Niners and sports is like, obviously, Really, it is an escape from reality. That's what sports, the whole idea of sports is, right? But, um, you know, it's just, this happens a lot to me. Uh, all, for the longest time, it was like streaming was my, like, obsession. It was my dedication, my obsession to, but the obsession was built upon, that was my escape, right? And then it switched to video games, and I was like, well, put the two together. That's just stream video games. So I was streaming video games, so... Then it was like, well, I'm getting tired of streaming. I'm, it's taking its toll on me mentally. So I'm just going to play games for a while. But then that got to the point where it's like I was doing that instead of the stuff I needed to do. So now I had to stop gaming. Okay, now I just focus on life and work. Well, now I have no escape. And I was staying up late to be able to watch videos and play games on my phone all night. So then I'm tired of shit. Then I can't get any of them during the day. So then I'm more miserable. And it's just a cyclical thing that happens with my brain mentally. But um. You know, it's, uh, it's been weird because, uh, I've mentioned in a couple of the last videos where I just like, I'm just trying to escape from my escape. If that makes sense. Like my escape is this channel, but now that's become stressful too. So now I'm trying to escape from that through, you know, the sports stuff. Like I said, most of it's usually watching YouTube videos, but it's the, it, my for you page changes drastically. Right. Sometimes it's just reaction videos, like massive amounts. Other times it's sports stuff. Other times it's video game videos. Like it depends on where my brain is at. Um, but now I'm at the point where it's like I'm trying to escape the escape. But now my stomach's been shit all week because I'm like just nervous about this game. So now I'm trying to not watch that. So now I'm trying to escape from the escape from the escape. And it's just like my brain can't catch up with everything. So like, and then I'm having anxiety because I want to do all of these things. I want to work on my song. I'm so close to finishing. But if I do that, then I can't record and edit these videos I want to put out. But if I do that, I can't get work done. And if I can't get work done, then I have to work on the weekends and I can't spend time with my family. But when I am with my family, because I don't have those escapes, I'm escaping on my phone and, and on YouTube and Instagram all day instead of spending time with my family. So like, I'm in this weird spot right now where... And I'm talking it up to like working through stuff in therapy. And I really do think that that plays a part of it. I think this is also the first Christmas with like my mom completely out of my life. So I think that's kind of in the back of my head of just, you know, it affects you. It's 
I made that decision and I still think it's the right decision, but it's still like, it's, it's a different dynamic, you know? And, uh, it's just something that I have to figure out. Um, I think that plays a part, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm throughout the day, throughout the evening, when my kids come home and stuff, I'm very like, I have a really short fuse. I'm always on my phone and I'm like present, but I'm not present. And it definitely is affecting me like in the moment I'm just somewhere else. But then when I come out of it and I see like, oh, look, the kids are next to me, but I'm not even interacting with them. It makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel like I'm a bad parent. And that's one of my biggest things in therapy is not feeling like I'm enough for pretty much everything. Uh, YouTube, work, house family stuff, parent, husband. I always feel like I'm never living up to my expectations for myself on that. And I always feel like I'm failing. So then I'm trying to overcompensate. And then because the overcompensation is already more bandwidth than I have, I'm failing at that too. So it's just like, my mental has been pretty, pretty shitty lately. Um, and I'm sure people in the discord can tell, like I, I used to send messages almost all day to keep the community engaged and they've been really great about staying engaged and stuff. And, um, I just, I don't want to be social. I haven't talked to any of my friends in a while. My dad and I always talk about football, but that's really about it. Um, my wife and I watch a couple TV shows in the evening. We go to bed and it's this repeat, repeat, repeat type of thing. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not even emotional talking right now. It's just like I'm numb to everything just because that's how I get through the day. If I take a moment to feel something, then I'll have that 30 minutes of like crying or whatever. And that's time I don't have. Like, I don't have time for that. Um, but yeah, uh, this isn't an excuse of why I haven't been posting stuff. It's just I really do think everybody needs that mental break from whatever it is ailing them. Um, and you know, I, I, I set myself up to succeed, but in doing so, like you're also setting yourself up to fail. You know, I, I had, I created those other channels that I have, my music channel, and my gaming channel, and the mentality there was all these things I want to do, but I want my main channel to stay kind of with the theme it has and take the other stuff I like to do and kind of separate them into other channels. So that way this channel doesn't get affected, but I can still do what I want. And if people like that stuff, they can go subscribe there. If they don't, they don't have to. Right. And they're not getting bogged down with stuff they don't want to watch. And at the same time, now, instead of worrying about one channel, I have to put videos onto, I have to worry about three channels. I have to put videos onto, um, you know, it's a lot of this stuff is self-inflicting. And I, I understand that. Um, it's just a lot. I think you guys can tell, like, even just this video, it's my mind is always in every direction at once. Um, you know, and, uh, TCF in my discord says that she thinks I'm neurodivergent. That remains to be seen. You could be right. I haven't been diagnosed with anything and I don't really think I'm going to like try and get that, but, um, you know, that's, that's kind of where I am. Um, you know, a lot of people have like, you know, they have their own addictions. Um, I, uh, I recently read Matthew Perry's book that he wrote. I'm listening to the audiobook actually, cause I don't have time to read. I can listen to it while I'm doing other stuff. And, um, I resonate a lot with what kind of caused him to get to where he was to be addicted and he talked about not being enough and everything in his life his big thing was it was kind of he didn't describe it in the way but the way he described it was kind of an unhealthy kind of way that he looked at his mother right his mother kind of he put her up on a pedestal and, and almost his entire life was trying to fill that role with the women he was with but his he felt his mom abandoned him in, in the beginning of his life right and the rest of his life was trying to do things that made her proud of him, but it also 
he also would sabotage his relationships because he didn't want to get hurt. So instead of letting the other person hurt, hurt him, he would end it before that could happen. And, you know, his vices to feel normal were, were, you know, pills and alcohol and stuff. I know what that can do to a family, so I don't do that. But I really do think my addiction is like video games. My addiction is YouTube. My addiction is escaping into technology somehow, some way. Um, and that addiction has increased these last few weeks. Um, you know, the new Call of Duty came out. And instead of working and doing all this YouTube stuff, I've been playing that just because it's a new thing to escape to that I won't get tired of real quickly. Hopefully. Um, so like, yeah, man, I, I, I hate not having content for you guys. Cause I feel like I have this momentum that I build up with these videos. Cause these last few videos I've had more than 10,000 views on, which is ridiculous. Cause my, my normal average is like three, three, three K maximum or like my av highest, like there's a between 1.8 and three is my average. But like I've been hitting the tens pretty quickly and I want to keep that momentum but also that puts pressure on me, right? If I create a video or I do a video and it gets less than a 1K, then I'm on on myself for like a week. A week, I feel bad. I feel like I failed, right? So, I don't know. Um, but yeah, again, I'm not making excuses. I'm not trying to get sympathy. I'm just trying to let you guys know where my mental state is at. And I think it's important for really anybody that's in any kind of spotlight to be honest about mental health. So I think there's a lot of people that think, look how happy and funny this guy is or this person is. They must really have a great life. It's like we all put really sort of when we go out in public, when we're at work and meetings, when we run meetings, when we're talking to our kids, our wives, our whatever, our significant others, we are still putting on a little bit of, you know, a, a happy face, right? The internal turmoil, at least for me, I can't let that bleed into my family because I grew up in a broken home man, and I don't want, that's like my biggest fear is creating the tension that then leads to a broken home. Cause I knew how, I know how torturous that was at times and I don't want that to happen to my family. So like I do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. Sometimes it means um, I'm leaving my own cup empty to make sure everybody else's cup is filled. And it's almost like as the cup stays empty, the cup gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. So now it's just like an addiction. It gets it takes a lot more to fill that cup as opposed to if I was just filling it, you know, um, regularly, it wouldn't take very much. So it's just something I have to work through. Um, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a weird few months. Therapy has been kind of a roller coaster. I have days where like, there's a lot to talk about. I had a couple times where I cried a lot. And then I had the last two times where it's like, I felt like I had nothing to talk about, but it's more so that I'm numb and I don't realize it until after our session. So like, I have to bring it up after the fact. But then that day, I'm not feeling that way anymore. We talk about it, but it doesn't really resolve anything because I don't have that feeling anymore. So it's just like, it's been weird. It's been, it's been weird a little bit. Um, the holidays, especially Christmas time, hasn't been great since like 2010 maybe? No, since like 2008 it was the last like good holiday season I had. So there's that as well. It's always been kind of a bad taste in my mouth for Christmas time. Um, it's just weird. It's just a weird, I'm in a weird state right now. So anyways, videos will be coming out. Uh, I have a lot. I'm going to start. Oh, that's there. I'll figure it out. I might put up here my little um, thing that I have of all of the videos I want to do throughout the next like two weeks that I have over here on the side. That way you guys in videos can see what's coming up. Um, and I'll post like once a week an update on what I'm recording and what's going to be coming out. Just so you guys are aware. Um, and it keeps me honest. If I say you guys, hey, I'm going to do this. And then I post that once and I never do it. I don't really feel that repercussion. But if I say, 
this date I'm releasing this and this date I'm releasing this. It'll keep me honest and I'll make sure that I get it done. So, um, and I don't want you guys to feel like I've lost the passion to do this. That's not what it is at all. It's just that I have a lot of different passions that instead of taking them one by one, I'm trying to jam pack them all in together. And now they're like clashing with each other and, and I'm not sure how to organize all of that stuff, both in my brain and literally like setting time aside to do it all in an organized manner. So these are things that I have to learn as I go through this process of being a content creator, right? It's one thing when you're playing video games on stream, like you can literally go in and like have a few bullet points for the three hour stream and then play the video games you want to play and be done with it, right? It's really, I don't want to downplay it, but it's really not that difficult to at least go in to a stream and have an entertaining, a decently entertaining stream like that. When you come into content creation, right? It can get very repetitive with reaction videos. So like, I, I don't, I want to keep things fresh, whether that means I'm adding different types of content like I've been doing or doing things a different way. Like my, the template for my videos have changed a lot, you know, whereas I have the same intro, like, members of the fly music society but then i changed that i changed the edit way i edit stuff i've changed the you know how things look right every other video or, or every four videos or so i have it to where i'm on the one side and the videos on the other side and then i go back to the normal of me and it with the in the corner right i just try to change things up to keep things fresh and interesting um both for me so i don't get bored and for you guys so you guys kind of don't get bored either um but I will say like every single day, even when I'm like trying to escape from it, I have this thing where I'm, I'm thinking about like, Oh, what are, what are my next few videos going to be? So it's always on my mind. Um, but I might not always physically do the things that are on my mind just cause I don't have the mental capacity at that moment. And, um, you know, yeah. Anyways, uh, so expect, a few videos next week, at least. Um, I'm almost done editing the first part of the Ren uh, Crackled Angels album. It's like going to be three or four songs. I might do it in three or four parts. And then um, a couple other videos that I'll hopefully be recording over the weekend. So I really do appreciate you guys making my channel grow so quickly. It's kind of insane. In the last week and a half, it's gone up 2,000 2, subscribers. Um, a friend of mine, what, when I posted high rent, like a couple weeks after he's like, dude, I expect you to be at 10 K by the end of the year. And I was like, maybe. And then la last month I was like, I'm only at 4 K. So I haven't even gotten half of what I need to, to get there. I don't think it's going to happen, but in one month, the way I've, I grew 2 K in two weeks in one month, I could grow 4 K if it st stays up and I'll be right there. So that's insane to me. Um, that's a huge milestone. So. Anyways, I really do appreciate you guys so much for the support and uh, stay tuned on Patreon because there's going to be a lot of stuff there that's going to be only on Patreon um, moving forward. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit of separation of duties between Patreon and YouTube. Patreon's going to be more for the paid requests um, that I'm not necessarily sure people on YouTube will want to watch. YouTube is going to be the stuff I want to watch that weren't requested that I think more people will want to watch. And then if the stuff on Patreon does really well with the people on there and it gets a lot of feedback, then I'll, I might put them on YouTube. Um, the TV show and movie reaction, which I've done one already for Dexter, uh, is going to, it's already on Patreon. If you want to watch it there, if you want to join there, uh, it'll take about two weeks for me to put it on YouTube. Cause I got to edit it down to only 10 minutes of content, the actual content. So that takes a little while. Um, so bear with me guys. I really do appreciate you guys for the support. It really means a lot, truly. It, it humbles me every time I look at my subscribers every day. When I feel down, I honestly go and look at that and it makes me feel happy. So um, now I'm going to get emotional. It, it means a lot. Um, I just didn't think I would be growing so fast. I'm just a, you know, a plain old white dude from California that kind of has stupid opinions sometimes, you know, and uh, very much a snob when it comes to music and it's nice to see that there's other people that kind of agree with my take on stuff. So, uh, 
I really appreciate it, guys. All right, I'm going to go. Love you all.